Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, I make videos about health and healthcare topics in very simplified language and all my videos are directly referenced from the internationally accepted US National Medical Library. And today I'm going to talk about ulcerative colitis. <coughs> yes. This is one of the most important topics and most in-demand topics which I have been requested for. So that's why I'm going to cover this in very details. I'm going to cover all the causes, symptoms, treatment, exams, tests, and even the prognosis and diet, nutrition, everything will be covered in this video. So stay tuned. The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. So what is ulcerative colitis? Guys, ulcerative colitis is basically a condition in which your intestine, there is a lining in your large intestine. Large intestine is also called colon and your colon and uh, the large intestine and the rectum, right? The lining of these things becomes inflamed. The lining, inner lining becomes inflamed and it's basically a form of inflammatory bowel disease, just like Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a related condition. So I've covered Crohn's disease before and this would be a second part, ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease. So basically there is inflammation, that's it, nothing else. Inflammation means there is a fighting response against bacteria. But only problem in this case is there is no bacterial infection. Without an infection, there is a fighting. That's why this is also called as an autoimmune disease. Now why will such thing happen? What will cause this kind of problem? See, if we talk about a single causative factor, there is none, right? But there is a whole... A uh, factorial thing here, a lot of factors play a role, right? Uh, people who have a condition, a problem with their immune system will have such issues. Uh, then why will somebody have this problem in their immune system is a little uncertain. But stress and certain foods can actually trigger this problem, right? So, but they, these kind of stress and these foods don't cause the problem, but they can trigger more inflammation. So you might have this uh, hypersensitivity of an inflammation, uh, inflammatory property in yourself, right? Now, this can happen in any age. And uh, most commonly it is seen in the ages of 15 to 30 and then uh, between 50 to 70, right? 1, 5 to 3, 0 and 5, 0 to 7, 0. This is the most common age group and disease actually begins more in the lower intestine in the rectal area and it stays in the rectal and spreads to the higher sides eh? to the whole of the large intestine. The disease does not stop there. It may involve the entire large intestine, right? Remember that. But yes, like I said, multifactorial. So family history, genetics play a big role. And if you have other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, or any other disease like vitiligo or other things, then there might be a chance you might have this, right? Jewish people, Jewish ancestry can also make you more susceptible to this problem, right? So all these things play a role. And there might be uh, predominantly your own genetics might be the main reason in this case. Then what, how will you know? What are the symptoms? See, symptoms can be more or sometimes very less and sometimes very severe, right? This symptoms, the any <coughs> symptoms may start slowly or suddenly. Half of the people will have mild symptoms and other half will have very serious symptoms, right? Other might have attacks, right? Serious attacks of pain in abdomen very often, right? When such things happen, what all you can have? You might have pain in abdomen. So, you might have pain in abdomen, 
in the belly area and cramping you might have a gurgling splashing sound which might be heard over the intestines uh, especially through a stethoscope sometimes it can be heard by yourself as well then you might have blood or possibly pus in your stools diarrhea right from only a few episodes to very often you might have variations in diarrhea you might have fever you might have uh, a lot of uh, weight loss you might feel that you have to pass your stool but eventually there is no bowel movement there is no stool your bowel is already empty because it's inflamed that's why you feel that they are full right so it might involve a lot of straining a lot of pain a lot of cramping so that's how the symptoms occur so it's not necessary that you will have every of thing which i just said you might have a few of them right and children uh, in that case if, if a child has this problem their growth can suffer they be, they become stunned i mean their growth slows down right then because this is an autoimmune disease can also have implications in other parts of the body so you might have joint pains and swellings you might have uh, mouth ulcers you might have nausea vomiting you might have skin lumps under the skin which might just burst out into ulcers so all these things can happen then how you should diagnose it how can how a doctor diagnoses this problem obviously the problem is in the large intestine so we need to look into it we need a colonoscopy and a biopsy this is the most often done test to diagnose ulcerative colitis and colloid <coughs> and colonoscopy can also be used to screen the people who have ulcerative colitis for possible colon cancer so other tests can also be done like barium enema sometimes blood tests like complete blood count crp c reactive proteins erythrocyte sedimentation radius sar sometimes stools are checked for lactoferrin and calprotectin antibodies tests are done by blood sometimes uh, small intestines are also checked where we need to differentiate between ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease crohn's disease is predominantly of the small intestine ulcerative colitis large intestine right so for that sometimes ct scan mri scan upper gi endoscopy capsule endoscopy sometimes all these studies or some of these studies can be done then ultimately the treatment depends on what are your goals the goal here is to control the acute attacks you cannot just get rid of this disease once and for all you can prevent repeated attacks you can help the colon to heal that's the that's actually the treatment goal here and during a severe episode you may need to be hospitalized and you may need steroids and even uh, nutrients may have to be given through iv line through the vein so ultimately all these things can be done but yes at home you can change your diet and nutrition certain type of foods can actually worsen the problem can worsen diarrhea and gas symptoms so these this problem may be uh, severe during the illness and active disease and some of the things which you can do is eat small amount of foods throughout the day don't eat big large meal small small amount of food throughout the day drink plenty of water but in small amounts throughout the day avoid very high fiber diet very high fiber food right bran beans nuts seeds popcorns avoid fatty greasy fried food sausages butter margarine and uh, margarine and heavy cream avoid all these things uh, limit the milk milk products if you are especially if you are lactose intolerant dairy products are good source of protein and calcium but if you cannot tolerate them limit them and then the most important factor here is stress you may feel worried embarrassed or even sad depressed because you have this problem but once you are stressed because of this problem or any other factor if you lost a job lost someone or if you have a big issue something or the other then any stress will worsen your problem this problem will become more severe right then talking about medicines as just as crohn's disease some of the similar medicines are used like five amino salicylates right 
such as sulfasalazine or mesalamine right these medications can actually control mild to moderate symptoms and these are again given by mouth or sometimes inserted into the anus medicines which are also used to to actually suppress the immune systems are also given prednisolone or uh, corticosteroid is given sometimes and remember steroids should always always be be taken by only by a prescription of a doctor only for a limited amount of time only to suppress the active uh, acute phase right they are not good for long time steroids can also be taken orally and through anally immunomodulators are medicines which are taken by mouth they affect your immune system then they can actually reduce the recurrence of this problems and also suppress the issues uh, medicines like azathioprine or 5 uh, 6 mp so these immunomodulator medicines like azathioprine or 6 mp can also be used and just like other autoimmune disease biological therapy is used if other treatment does not respond if you don't respond very well with them then obviously pain for pain you need to take only paracetamol acetaminophen thionol which will relieve your mild to moderate pain avoid drugs like aspirin ibuprofen naproxen all the nsaids avoid all these and lastly if there is actually a severe problem if there is a permanent damage which has happened to your large intestine your colon then surgery might be needed right if that uh, part is showing signs of colon cancer then obviously it has to be removed so surgery might be needed needed if your problem your colon is not responding to medical therapy if there is changes in the line of colon that leads to cancer if there is a severe problem such as rupture of the colon severe bleeding toxic mega colon all these things most of the times the entire colon or uh, including the rectum is removed uh, in this kind of surgery and after surgery you may have an opening in your belly called a stoma ileostomy uh, stools will basically drain out through this opening and a procedure that corrects the small intestine to the anus to gain more normal bowel function can also be done so that is all there is to the treatment of this condition but if we talk about the prognosis if you have mild symptoms moderate symptoms in about half of the cases can be managed only if you have severe symptoms then it is less likely that you will respond to just medications cure is only possible through complete removal of the large intestine this is the only cure and that is obviously surgical only done if it is needed only if the above criteria met like i said just before the risk of colon cancer obviously is there if we talk about the uh, prognosis and this risk increases in each decade after ulcerative colitis is diagnosed even if you have no problem no uh, symptom still the risk is always there so regular test needs to be done and obviously if you don't take treatment then you have uh, a lot of chances of complications complications can be from colon narrowing to colon blockages a lot of bleeding infections dilations of the large intestine tears holes perforations anemias even sometimes blood counts go here and there you might have uh, thinning of the bones can actually happen because there will be a problem in absorbing nutrients from the large intestine so calcium absorption will suffer there will be problems in maintaining a healthy weight slow growth and development in children then obviously they will have anemia and uh, because of blood loss then some types of arthritis can actually uh, accompany this problem liver disease can happen sores and swelling can happen in the eye you might have lumps and nodules in your skin you might have abscess or you know, mouth ulcers so all these things are uh, possible complications of this condition so if you have ongoing abdominal pain if you have new increased bleeding new <coughs> so if you have so if you have ongoing abdominal pain you have intestinal bleeding lower uh, gi bleeding you have uh, 
fever which is not going away if you have symptoms any of the symptoms of this ulcerative colitis go and talk to your doctor get evaluated gastroenterologist is the best doctor for this condition and there is no known prevention for this condition just have a balanced diet a healthy lifestyle a good healthy sleep you know all the good things which you can do that's all you can do for this this condition is serious, it's severe, it's life debilitating, but a positive aspect is the main key to live with this condition. All right, inflammatory bowel disease is the main group, and ulcerative colitis is the part of it. It's also called IBD, ulcerative colitis, uh, is also called uh, proctitis or ulcerative proctitis. So that's all about this condition. Stay tuned, guys, we'll be covering other conditions soon. And uh, make sure to jot down your comments about this topic down below. I'm Dr. Paramjit. I'm a consultant physician and cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nairunagar Delhi, NCR. Stay connected. Stay healthy.